so, or it has to be in a particular gender specific group to have this conversation but we're going to be looking at gender equity and inclusion in workplaces my name is Priscilla Regina Daloga welcome to our Kickstarter now representation of a person and community not only advocates equality but also adds a sense of inclusion to the previously marginalized community for a healthy performance oriented culture organizations need a right to mix of talent which is not bound by gender in in a world where accountability has become important now more than ever, we dig into the accountability of dismantling the stigma on menstruation at workplaces. Yes, you had it right, menstruation at workplaces. So joining me is Diana Nelson. She's a Global Advocacy Director, Days for Girls International. Good morning to you, Diana. Hi, good morning, Priscilla. You're most welcome. Thanks. Yeah. And then uh, next to her, we do have William Osal, who's the Country Manager for Days for Girls Uganda. Good morning to you. Good morning, Priscilla. Thank yep. you for having me. It's a pleasure to have both of you. This is a very sensitive conversation. Um, one would be wondering, why are they talking about menstruation? <laughs> 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 on TV this early in the morning with a gentleman on set. Uh, but mm -hmm. the more reason that we need to talk about. I believe that uh, Days for Girls International came, was birthed out of something, Diana. I would like to hear the story of how it came into existence. Oh, sure. So Days for Girls is an international organization that focuses on achieving menstrual equity because we know that like you said it's an unusual topic to talk about sometimes it's it's seen in secrecy and shame and so often people don't understand the challenges that women and girls have mm -hmm. when they have their periods so days for girls came when we saw young girls being forced to be in their room never leave doing sexual transactions to get pads and we thought this cannot happen and, um, and so that's where we started. So we do advocacy, we do policy, we do reusable pads through yeah. social entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And then from that, as we've done things, we've seen this, this need in the workplace. And that's where the period positive workplace came from. Okay, what's your personal experience uh, from your work through communications line? Has it been an easy ride for you when it comes to uh, this equity and inclusion in the workplace for menstruation? No, it's not been easy, and I think um, the reason is is because a lot of people aren't aware of it. I think oftentimes we don't know about, we can't fix a problem if we don't know there's a problem. And like you said, it's an unusual conversation to be having early in the morning because typically it's a very private matter, mm -hmm. and, and that's come because of the cultures. And what we're trying to say is, if we don't talk about this, you don't understand what may be happening at the workplace. Yeah. And and it's a normal function, like half of our population has periods and, and that can impact their work and they need to have supportive environments at work. And so when you begin the conversation, oftentimes men are uncomfortable, right? Like, oh, why yeah, are we I talking can about see this? William's hands are over. <laughs> <laughs> He's over. I, I, I'm waiting to give you more information on I am what waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. actually, let me turn to you, William, directly. Um, she has spoken of culture, and you know our culture is Africa, more specifically Uganda, is different. Uh, these conversations are left to the bedroom in a bush somewhere that's yeah. where they'll take the girl and give her this gruesome lecture yeah. about menstruation but yeah. it will never be brought out in the public or society or even family uh, by and large as the smallest unit of interaction and so with that being our background what has been your personal experience way before you actually uh, got into positive engagement and advocacy mm -hmm. for menstruation well rightly said we come from a society that is really um, patriarchal and uh, that means men really make decisions on most of the things at a household level and that said even menstruation has some costs in terms of the resources that are needed to provide for the women and the girls and we know that men control the resources much as we are talking about women economic empowerment but we have not yet achieved that totally so um, you realize that in communities um, girls and women need these services but if the men are not you know, understanding what they're supposed to do, mm -hmm. this day we have a number of parents who are single. You, know. you don't have a wife, yeah. you don't have probably a sister who is older than a young girl to understand what she's going through. So it's only fair that the men are you know, brought closer so that they understand the issues and they understand the role they're supposed to play. 
to ensure that women and girls live with dignity, especially respect to menstruation. Okay. Yeah. All right. Tell us about the period positive workplace. Now, the period positive workplace is just an extension of the work people have been doing around menstruation. There is a lot of work done in the schools. There is a lot of work being done in the communities. But we are saying, hey, within the workspaces, how are we faring? Mm -hmm. Because we know that we have women, worldwide women are half of the total popula working population. And we know that they're experiencing menstruation on a monthly. Mm -hmm. And as we always know, menstruation appear when you probably you are not prepared for it and it's involuntary. Mm. So ha what happens if a woman comes to the workplace and then suddenly they, you know, a menstruation starts, she has to walk out. We know the pain that comes along with it. So we are saying, can we prepare ourselves? Can the HR has put this as something that women benefit from as, 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 as workers? But also, most importantly, um, can we make this service, uh, these products accessible, either for pay or the cost can be subsidized, but also maybe management can provide this fully. Yeah, the, no way the way management provides for condoms in workplaces, exactly. right? Uh, and exactly. they can also provide pads in workplaces. Exactly. I do agree with you on that one. Okay, so which brings us into the question of uh, menstrual equity. Dana, from your experience uh, that you have had traversing different communities, what is uh, this menstrual equity and how important is it for companies to actually mm -hmm. adopt menstrual equity? Yeah, that is such a good question because it, it's so important because I like what William said, it's an involuntary function and you asked earlier, what are some barriers that you might face as you talk about this? One of the things I found is often men don't understand that it's involuntary bleeding, like a, a bloody nose. And if you get a bloody nose, you can't just tell someone, just hold it, wait. They have to immediately address that. And that's how, why it's important at the workplace to have it addressed because a woman can't just hold her period. She needs to be able to, to immediately, right, deal with it. Did you want to, it looks like you're saying something. Yes. No, yeah, so anyway, so because of that, we know it has to be addressed and we don't, we don't want women to suffer because of that. And I was gonna add to what William said, I think oftentimes it, it hasn't been addressed because people aren't aware that this is a problem. Mm. And COVID-19 really helped highlight that, in particular in, in the healthcare sector. So what we saw when women were put in their PPEs and they were asked to stay in the ER or in the hospital for an extended amount of time, they had no way to manage their period. And they were forced to decide, what do I do? And they would wear their products longer than they should. Many of them bled out. Mm. And so it wasn't until then that the healthcare people were like, wait, mm. what are we doing for these women? And that's a terrible situation to be put in. And so because of that, that's where the period positive workplace has come from. We need to recognize that, yes, we all produce work, male and females and males, but we do have involuntary things that happen every month that we have to address. And we want to be supported in that so we can be productive at work, so we can um, be present and focused. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, William, how can we challenge companies uh, to actually be able to have this consideration uh, dismantle this whole barrier that we do have as women? Because honestly, uh, from personal experience, I can't really walk up to my boss and say, yeah. because I'm having my menstruation, I need to go home. I, ne I need to leave the environment right now. I, I, will, I, I usually go like, I'm not feeling well, I'm mm. sick. Yeah, d mm. <laughs> disguising it in such yeah. a way. So how do we create a safe environment at the workplace for that equity? I think the starting point is for the management to first get the awareness. What mm. are we talking about exactly? Because for most people, when they hear about menstruation, it's okay, it's women issues, and it's normal. It should be handled, it by, should women. Be handled yeah. by women. After all, the HR is, is that most why times they make anyway, most HR is num women? Number <laughs> of them are women, <laughs> yeah. But I think right from the board of governors where they do exist, the message should be preached clearly mm. that there is a challenge that we need to deal with. And this should extend to putting it in policies of mm -hmm. organizations so that as you're joining, you know that this is a benefit you're getting. As a when, when you say policies, what are some of those policy considerations that should be adopted? Now, for example, if I'm, I'm being hired at NTV and I'm a lady, in my the employee handbook or in my appointment letter, it should be indicated as a benefit that maybe on a monthly basis you get a pack or you can easily have access whenever you go to the washroom. 
but also um, menstruation and water and sanitation is very close related. What are the qualities of the washrooms we have? Do they really meet the World Health Organization standards? So that is another aspect that we should challenge uh, management to ensure that these are put in place. But also in terms of providing information, you know, many women themselves do not know how to manage this issue. They are grappling as themselves, live alone as men. Mm -hmm. So can we provide some information like within the resource center, someone can walk in and read, you know, and also have maybe points of uh, referrals where they can go and seek for guidance. Uh, we have had stories of, you know, women who would request for leave. Of course, um, I'm glad to mention that I think there are countries which have already gone a step ahead, like Indonesia, you know, Zambia, that women can go and leave when they're on their menstruation. But I mean, step by step, we are not yet there. Yeah. So can we start with this, you know, basic, so that we are, we are able to support women to be able to, uh, you know, be more productive and efficient within the work environment. Right. Priscilla, yeah. could I add, one of the things that I found is we've talked about the period positive workplace, is men in organizations are saying, thank you. I, I wanted to be more supportive, more inclusive at work, but I, I wasn't really sure how they to do did? it. Yes, a few have. African men. Yes. <laughs> Actually, one of them said, why have we been, it's true, <laughs> but one of them even said, why have I been left out of this conversation? Yeah. I didn't know what was happening because and they said, because I've, I didn't know people work secretly, like this was an involuntary thing. And so what I have been finding is actually, a pr in fact, they've been using the word appreciate. We appreciate this for a way to make our work environment more inclusive. And, and then I can tell you, if you don't mind, we had an or one of the things, like what, what William said, I think that changes that culture and the stigma in the workplace is accurate information. And so the other day in Uganda with an organization, we did a 30-minute webinar on what is menstrual health and why is it important at work? How does it impact work? And their HR person made it very clear, I just want 30 minutes. We're like, okay, no problem. We have five minutes for a question. That conversation went 65 minutes. Wow. And 35 minutes was 54 of the staff, yeah. male and female, yeah. asking questions. Of, of which um, it then begs the question, how do we foster a workplace environment that actually uh, encourages empathy and support uh, of everybody in this conversation? Because you're a woman, I'm a woman. Our cycles are different. They treat us differently. Some people will crawl, some people end up in hospital yeah. on drips, some need injections. So there's no <laughs> there's no direct bar uh, mm. for you know menstruation. It's, it varies from person to person, which then definitely makes it difficult because if your menstruals take five days, those are five working days mm -hmm. that have been affected. Will your boss be understanding of every single month? Yeah. You know those dynamics. Uh, William, how do you encourage those dynamics to be addressed? I think first of comes with honesty because uh, we shouldn't use this again as women to you know. Uh, make the employer to lose time, you know, because uh, at the end of the day, no one can understand exactly what you're feeling. But at most, f uh, honesty and integrity will be very key in ensuring that uh, this is something that uh, can be considered a workplace. But also, um, I know even if your cycle probably goes for five days or seven days, the feeling is not the same all through the days. So maybe the first two days, or maybe the you know the mid. Uh, the middle of the days so it is really um, starts with you as the person experiencing this and also on the side of the employer or the your HR to understand that this is something that is practical mm -hmm. but while we're having this conversation I think it's also important that we are alive to the fact of the informal sector we know that majority of the workers are also in the informal sector, and some of the things we are saying might not be applicable right. in real time sense as we are talking to them. But we recognize that if the people at the top understand it, because some of them are the ones who have invested in the informal se sector, they are the ones who employ these workers, but also important in terms of decision making, if people at the top understand it, then they can come up with appropriate measures and policies to ensure that those, even in the formal sector, especially in, in terms of putting the, uh, the appropriate 
washrooms in place okay. are affected. All right, um, Diana, in conclusion, I see you wearing a bit, <laughs> they have a little bit of red, so I'm hoping it has risen us to the discussion we're having. Yes. And as you tell us about that also, in conclusion, period positive workplaces, the places in which this has been adopted, what have been the changes that have come with that work environment? Such great questions. Well, first, let me. <laughs> so this is the um, the global sign for menstruation and menstrual equity, and much like cancer has a pink ribbon, oh. this represents um, you know the five days of a woman's cycle, and and that's what this is for. So when you see it, it means menstrual equity. We we do that, and then I love your question. What has come from this? So I I think I would say, probably, um, the respect and towards the, em the employee to the employer. So Morgan Stanley and many organizations have reported back, we did not expect the outpouring of compliments to us saying, thank you for recognizing this. And even from the men saying, thank you for addressing this. I'm, I'm a husband, I have daughters, I, I know this. And so right now we're still getting data. This is a, a new program. Okay. So I don't have statistics I can say behind it. Everything's anecdotal. But so far, organizations who have adopt, adopted this has said, we feel more inclusion at work. We've heard it said, we've seen, um, just it's, it created a more cohesive unit at work okay well thank you so much diana and william for bringing this conversation to light for us here in morning at ntv and i trust with the different engagements and for those of you that work in companies or company leads uh, that have been able to take heed of this conversation you could have a consideration uh, perhaps go back and have an integrated conversation around it mm -hmm. and see how to best mitigate help one another at the end of the day we're complementary we need each other uh, to have the growth desired. That brings us to the end of our Kickstarter. We do take a short breather. We return shortly. You're watching Morning at NTV.